but a story that's less often remarked on is the vast infrastructure of timing that had to be built across the globe in order to measure and then distribute the precise time that sailors needed in order to set their chronometers right during long voyages. But I think infrastructure is pretty important too, which is why I spend so much time studying it and exploring it. The time ball, set up at the Greenwich Observatory in 1833 to transmit time to sailors waiting in the River Thames below, is fairly well known. But the same year, out of sight of the British Imperial capital, another time ball was erected by the British government. That one was on the coast of Southern Africa, at the Cape of Good Hope. Before too long, it was joined by literally hundreds of time signalling structures acting as frontier foot soldiers around the coastlines of all empires. And let me be clear about the scale of this infrastructure of time. In 1908, the British Navy carried out a survey that listed a total of 200 time signals that could be found on coastlines or in ports around the world. They were usually time balls, like the one at Greenwich, or, built for a very different reason, the one in New York's Times Square. But sometimes they took the form of time discs, or time guns, or time signalling flags. 200 of them, and the document reveals the astonishing geographical reach of the world's maritime powers. It was by far the world's biggest network of time signalling stations, but by 1908, the year the survey was published, America was fast catching up as a world power, having built 22 coastal time signals on its own soil, with a further two in its port possessions in the Philippines. Each and every one of these time signal installations was a major undertaking, involving complex surveying, engineering, land acquisition, the recruitment and management of labour forces, legal negotiation, maintenance, astronomical observation, instrument making, and a huge amount of expertise developed over decades or centuries. Each one was a heavy investment and a long-term liability, and taken together with the tens of thousands of shipboard chronometers for which they were built, and the global network of chronometer testing stations, chronometer and clock makers, retailers, supply depots, not to mention the dozens of government astronomical observatories that found the time in the first place to distribute across this network. We can see a vast global physical presence of time, of clocks in one form or another, that's been all but forgotten. Plot all these time signals and chronometers on a map of the world and you can see how clocks enabled empires. <laughs>